Welcome, my name is Cody Keith, and today we are talking about how to get the film look within Lightroom CC. Now, let's get started. This is the image that I came up with. I did a quick little edit of it before getting on the mic with you guys. Now, let's start from the beginning. So I'm going to go down here and hit the reset button and it's going to bring me back to my original image. Let's get a little closer look of this original image. This was taken in raw format in my Canon 5D Mark III in Hawaii this past December. This is Diamond Head uh, right there off of Waikiki uh, on the island Oahu. Um, so let's get editing now. Now to get the film look, before we get there, we're gonna have to go through the regular adjustments that we mess with uh, when editing a photograph within Lightroom. So let's start with our temperature. This looks like it was taken outside, so 5600 uh, Kelvin is what it was at. I'm gonna warm it up a little bit. And with the look I'm trying to get with this film, I'm gonna bring the tent down to more towards the green side and get uh, rid of some of that magenta now maybe I'm gonna bring this back just a tad right here there that's what I like right here now my exposure looks pretty good so it doesn't look like I need to touch it however my blue channel up here looks like it's clipping or just about to clip so let's move on for now and the highlights uh, and they look good let's just bring up the white channel just a tad bit right here so it's just clipping just a little bit uh, if my computer responds, there we go. Now bring the blacks down. Now clarity, clarity. When I go for the film look, I, I really like to uh, reduce the clarity a bit. Um, I have at some times increased the clarity. It's just what you're going for at that particular moment. And right now, I think I'm going to reduce it just by a little bit. And now... Since I like that, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my vibrance. Get a little more pop within those colors, but still try to keep it realistic. Um, so now, let's go to our tone curve. Now, the tone curve is really important in getting that film look. So, let's do this. Right here, I want you to click on this little box right here so we can set our points within this curve. Right here are your shadows, right here are your mids, right here are your highlights. Now let's just add a few in here, okay? Right there. We can move these points around along any point in this line. Uh, but for that film look, we really want that matte look. So let's go ahead and zoom into our shadows a little bit and bring up our blacks, our shadows. And kind of, you'll see that that matte look is starting to show itself in the image. And maybe let's mess with this. That's a little too much. Now there that there there we go now this the contrast is the mids so let's bring that up just a tad and i like that way the way it's looking right now the way it's falling between the shadows and the highlights is, is great it looks very film-esque now uh i think i'm gonna leave that where it's at and go to my color bars in the hsl tab uh, right here I have the blue channels like I mentioned earlier clipping uh, a little bit and now more so than it was earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the luminance and bring down those blues a little bit and bring back some of that detail. Right there looks about right. Uh, let's go ahead and just desaturate that just a tad. I think it's a little too much. Maybe Let's see what aqua does to this. There's definitely a lot of aqua in it so let's keep that right there. Um, let's see what it does on the Lumina channel for the Aqua. Uh, I kind of like it up like this, and plus it's not clipping that blue channel again. Uh, it's just about to, though. So now let's go to split toning. Split toning can really help get that film look according to whatever type of film you're trying to emulate that uh, exists on the market. Uh, now with split toning, you got your highlights and your shadows and you can choose a color for each your highlights and shadows and and also manipulate the saturation of each channel now uh, you just want to make sure 
that you keep in mind complementary colors when doing this. Uh, and I provided a link in my blog post where you can go to Adobe's color wheel and kind of mess around with the wheel that they got there and see what is complementary uh, from one another. Now, for this sake, I'm going to go ahead and use put some yellow into my highlights. And ooh, I kind of like that right there. Exit out of that, and now I can change basically the opacity of it. I guess you could use it. Uh, as a word for this also but it's used as saturation right here so i'm going to bring it up a little bit i uh, kind of like that right there it kind of looks good um and then i'm going to go in here into my shadows and i'm going to go to my blues and put a little more blue in there Ooh, i like that that looks awesome so let's bring that in now and see the saturation and see how much we want it in our shadows let's see i like that now let's see the difference with the split toning. And you can see it really adds to that film look that you get. I like it, so let's move on. I'm gonna move on to the detail and bring some detail into this image. Um, so let's start with the mountain sharpening on one. And I am holding down the option key and moving the slider with my other hand to try to figure out where or how much sharpening I want within this image. And I'm also going to find a point in this small little window right here uh, to get a closer look at it. There we go. I like that radius. We don't want to abuse too much. Uh, just enough where you can see some of the lines. Uh, it's better to get a view in this small little window. Detail, I don't really do too much to detail. Just a tap in will help masking and bring out the image for the masking and bring that masking up uh, to the point uh, this is basically the dark areas are showing the areas that aren't going to be sharpened and the, the light areas are the the points in the image that will uh, have the sharpening mask applied to. Now for noise, I'm not really going to worry about because one, we're trying to get grain in this image since it is a film look we are going for. But also because I shot at ISO 100, um, that's the limit. Uh, the lowest you can go on the 5D Mark III, it's not like a Nikon where you can go down to 50, but uh, who cares? That's not too big of a difference. Now let's go over here and enable the profile uh, correction, and that looks nice. Um, and let's go to effects, and here is where you're going to find your grain slider. Now let's exaggerate this a little bit so we can refine the size and the roughness of this grain that we're trying to get for this film look. Now I like to keep it on the lower end of things. Right here, let's get rid of some of the roughness of it as my computer moves slowly, especially in this. It's adding a lot of grain to it. So let's bring down the size of that grain a little bit more. And the roughness, I kind of like right there it's a little rough but not too much it's a little more subtle now let's just bring down the amount of grain that i have within this image right there still need a, oh, that looks pretty good right here um i like it so let's expand this out let's see what we get with our results and it looks very nice it's still working on pulling up the full image there we go before and after just a subtle difference but it adds a lot to it so uh there we go and i like this final result let's see a full view of this image that we have now i do notice one thing is i'm not fond of the composition one a little bit so let's put one little final touch on it let's maybe rotate this a little bit uh because i don't think it's relatively straight but first Let's go ahead and bring this down. Now let's rotate. We got a little more room to work with. So. This computer is killing me right now. Cool, right there. Let's see how that works. I'm bring this up. I'm going to move this a little bit. There we go. And then let's click enter. I like that. Now let's look at the before and after that we get from this. 
that is the before right here and this is our after it definitely looks film -esque look at that let's zoom in a little bit and see what it looks like right here we got more greens popping right here uh, we, we can see the grain uh, the split toning totally different look than what we get with the digital camera especially especially after we edit um, so that is the end of today's tutorial slash blog post um, if you have any comments or a question, please leave it in the comment section within the blog post or YouTube video. And you can also uh, visit us on our social media channels on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. I definitely favor Instagram over all of them, but go figure. I take photos. Uh, so thanks for joining me today. Uh, I hope to see you again, and hopefully I helped you in the process of getting that film look you love. Have a great night.